and about 1864, with the Civil War pretty well in hand, uh, rumbling started in to get the project going as a state-operated project. The state uh, legislature looked around and retained a gentleman by the name of Thomas Doan, and the state began uh, hiring people, and they got themselves into the tunnel building business. One of the first things Doan did was to build what's known as the central shaft. Just shy of the true center line lies the central shaft building. Descending into the depths of the earth, the central shaft was built using similar techniques to the east and west portals, only this was a vertical bore. When it came time for the black powder to blow, these men couldn't run and hide behind a work cart or a large rock. They had to climb into a cast iron bucket and hope they could be hauled up before the explosion occurred. There was great controversy whether it was necessary or not because it had to be a thousand feet deep or the same as the height of the Empire State Building to put it in perspective. Behind me you can see the Empire State Building sprawling up towards the sky. To think about it, these men dug straight down through solid granite to that depth having to haul out all the rock and pump out all the water along the way. That's pretty amazing. Despite the fact that the shaft had to be sunk as deep as the height of the Empire State Building and all the added work, the central shaft was, in reality, a necessity. They knew right from the 1850s, the, the early engineering, that they had to have a central shaft because the tunnel goes uphill both ways and without a shaft for, to ventilate the smoke from the uh, steam locomotives, the tunnel would be absolutely uh, uh, worthless. Since the tunnel's headings towards the center are on a slight uphill to allow for natural drainage of water out either portal, this meant that smoke from any train would flow up towards the center of the tunnel, thereby causing a permanent and deadly smoke screen inside the bore. The idea was, oh, we'll, we'll do it uh, when we get around to it. But then they, when they ran into the, all the problems at, with the, the porridge rock at West Portal and, and progress there was so, so slow, they decided that, well, let's do the central shaft now, put a lot of effort into that and money, and then we can we get the central shaft down to grade, and then we can, we can tunnel both ways. And in drilling it, of course, drilling from the top of a mountain, we're creating a well in the process, and it would be not only overwhelmed with rock, and dangerous explosions, but also water. To overcome the water, platforms were built at intervals with steam-powered pumps on them that worked non-stop. Originally an open hole in the ground, a large wooden hoist building was later added. It now has an electric fan house that it uses to pump out the smoke and fumes from the tunnel below. Receiving its three-phase power from North Adams, it can clear the tunnel in virtually no time with its twin horn fans. Reaching a total depth of 1,028 feet, the central shaft ultimately proved its worth in ventilation. It wasn't without a price, however. When it was about half completed, or 500 feet into the mountain, a fire broke out in the hoist building atop the shaft, and all of the burning timbers from that fire fell down the shaft, trapping 13 miners who were all killed in this accident which again provided more fuel for the argument, why are we wasting our time and money on this dangerous project? That's set the whole project back uh, a, full, a full year. They lost all their machinery and buildings and they had to rebuild them all. But when they did do it, they did it in a much more uh, substantial and efficient way. So they probably more than made up for the, uh, for the lost time. Of course, you can't make up for lost lives, that's, that's a given. Despite all the political wrangling and setbacks, work proceeded and the central shaft was ultimately finished. Once the central shaft reached grade level, an arch was built over the tunnel to prevent any objects that may fall down the shaft from landing on the tracks or hitting any trains passing below. Doan was not only responsible for uh the crews and the work, but he also had to, and chose to, resurvey the tunnel. In the new survey, he made the bore a straight shot, 
rather than Hopp's offset approach. In this process, Doan built a number of aligning towers. If you're going to build a tunnel by hand with, uh, with sledgehammers and, and black powder, which was the, the technology when they started, uh, you kind of don't want the headings to miss each other, which would be a disaster to say the least. So the, the lining towers were, were needed to make sure that the, the surveying was absolutely uh, spot on so that when the headings did meet uh, two or three miles inside the tunnel that they would, they would match up. During the tunneling, at any one time, there were up to seven, or were possibly more, towers built in the aligning process. The main four were on Roe Mountain, Whitcomb Summit, Spruce Hill, and Notch Road. More temporary towers were built at the east and west portals and the central shaft. While the term tower is used, only four of them were what we could call towers. Whitcomb Summit, Spruce Hill, Notch Road, and the one at the East Portal were all built out of stone, with a wooden roof and a 25-foot tall red and white striped pole protruding out the top. The other towers ranged from several poles sticking out of the ground, such as used at the West Portal, to transit scopes on rock foundations at the central shaft, and a heliotrope, a large metallic ball similar to a reflecting globe, used in conjunction with a range pole on Rowe's neck. In each tower was a transit scope, much like a current day surveying scope. These scopes were used to line each tower up with the other towers. Inside the tunnel, plumb bobs were hung at intervals from wooden pegs in the ceiling and crews would align with the light at the portals of the tunnel. Of the original towers, remnants of only four remain. Roe Mountain, Whitcomb Summit, Spruce Hill, and Notch Road. Perched on the western summit of Roe Mountain, Roe Tower is marked by large blue tarps that can be seen from the parking area near the east portal below. Are you by the rocks? Halfway between the rocks and the pine tree. Once used to align with the East Portal and Whitcomb Summit Tower, all that remains of this tower is four large metal spikes sticking out of the ground. Here's that blue tarp you can see from here. Bam! It's marking where the tower used to be. There's also a little tube up here. No, oh, just a little buck. See here it says www.jkrails.net. First book placed May 2006, second book placed May 25th, 2009. That's today. We're not the only ones to be up here today. After a quick signing of the book, it was off to the next tower. Heading westward from the Row Tower is Whitcomb Summit Tower. This tower was used to align with the Row Tower, Central Shaft, and the Spruce Hill Tower. All four main footings are still standing, and there are long metal rods inside, perhaps used to hold a lantern, which may have provided light for the transit scopes to spot. Rumor has it that a keen-eyed observer on a clear, calm day can spot this tower from the sky. This filmmaker didn't happen to see the tower, but was able to note the area it once stood in. Next, it was off to Spruce Hill. Out of the main towers, Spruce Hill was the highest, at approximately 2,500 feet. It sat on the edge of Spruce Hill and was used to line with the central shaft, Whitcomb Summit Tower, and Notch Road Tower. If you're expecting much of this tower, prepare to be disappointed. In fact, if you didn't know specifically what you were looking for, you would have no idea what it was. The tower was destroyed years ago most likely when new power lines went through to the central shaft. Nothing but a pile of rocks is left. Finally, it's off to the last remaining tower, Notch Road Tower. What's probably in the best shape of the four remaining towers is Notch Road Tower. This tower was used to align with the Spruce Hill Tower and West Portal. 
all four main footings remain standing showing the square corners and original mortar.